Hey guys, it's Anna with Anna Travels back with another coffee talk. Today's coffee is pumpkin spice latte from Starbucks. Um, it's fall, so that's that's what I wanted today. Um, today's coffee talk is going to be how to become a travel agent, and it's based on my personal experience in the United States, so I don't know about other countries or other travel agents' experiences, but th these are my experience. It is a question that I do get asked every now and then from friends, friends of friends, um, random people email me or Facebook message me um, asking how I become a travel agent. So we're going to go into that topic. If you're new here, um, my name is Anna. I do travel related content. I haven't been posting as much lately, been super busy, like just personal wise. So I haven't had time to travel as much this summer but hopefully correct that for the fall. So please like and subscribe and join me for future videos. And let's get into it. So I'm gonna go over what a travel agent is. Is it still a viable career in 2023 and beyond? And just maybe three helpful things just to consider if you are considering a career as a travel agent. So let's get started. So first off, on a very basic, basic level, a travel agent books travel for couples, individuals, groups, um, you know, and there are corporate travel agents too that book travel for, you know, employees and such like that. But that's a basic, you know, very basic definition. We book travel. The viability of the career. I'm not going to lie to you. Being a travel agent, you have a lot of competition. You have competition from other travel agents. You have competitions from like big box sellers like Costco and like Expedia and all those sorts of other and Expedia and Hotels.com and all those other things are, are travel agents in their own. And then you also like now I hear AI is like making like travel itinerary and you have people that like do it as like a hobby. And um, so there is a lot of competition and you know, but I think the one benefit is setting yourself apart. And I think that's one important thing. Um, I guess I'm going into a tip already. But is it a viable career in 2023 and beyond? I definitely think so. I, you know, yes, you have people that will always, the, they are looking for the cheapest deal and they'll like nitpick every detail and then they'll end up booking through like Expedia, you know, or Costco or whoever can find them the cheapest deal and then you have people that really they don't really want to even deal with that they just want like a good itinerary they want someone just to plan everything out for them and then they pay them and then they go they don't really want to deal with all those other details of them having to search they're busy they have families they have careers they're just like hey call you up hey Anna I want to book 12 days in Tokyo and Kyoto and Osaka. Can you just put together something and send it to me? And that's what I do. And um, <laughs> so that's that's one thing that is going to still like have the travel agency, you know, business viable is some people just don't want to deal with that. They just want to have a person on, that they can, a dependable person that they can call and get their vacations planned for them without them having to do it. And also about the personalized service, you know, you can't get that if you're going to book your travel through Costco. You know, if you're calling Costco, you're going to get a call center, you know, and that call center person isn't going to really know about the details of your trip or, you know, like and all those other miscellaneous things. You know, I can tell you, names of all my customers right now, <laughs> you know, because I don't have a huge, I don't have 10 million trips, you know, in my system. I know all of my customers. I know all of my clients, you know, that have travel with me and, you know, have booked travel or, you know, have had travel in the past, you know, and Costco can't say that they have a database. <laughs> you know, I didn't mean I have a database too, but I also have it in here. Um, so yeah, so that's why people still are going to use travel agents in the future. So one thing that stops a lot of people in their tracks, and like a lot of people hear this, and then they're like, oh, well, I don't think I want to pursue this business any further, is how we are paid. Now, I don't know about any other travel, but I'm considered an independent contractor, and I'm paid after my client travels. So we have suppliers, and suppliers could be like Disney World, Sandals, Universal, um, you know, like Margaritaville, you know, like all these like resorts and stuff like that, and etc. 
um, the vacation destination type or the touring companies, you know, each of them has their own payment payout schedule. So like Disney, like my client, she just checked into Disney World today. I'll probably be paid in October. So today is September uh, 7th. So I'll probably get my check in October. Um, some suppliers like Universal pays 45 days after travel. So if I had a client checking into Universal today, I probably wouldn't get that check until November or December-ish, probably more likely December. Um, and our agency pays once a month. So, you know, the supplier could pay like right today, but I wouldn't see that check until the first of the month of, of the next month. And, you know, I'll get into agencies later. So, you know, keep watching. But a lot of people, they, they think this is like an hourly gig, like, oh, you know, you book a certain amount of trips, you get paid $15 an hour. Maybe in some other cases, I don't know, or, or different travel agencies. But in our case, I get paid commission um, from the supplier and my agency pays out once they get paid. So a lot of people, they want, you know, cash income immediately. I think if you treat this like as a business and cultivate this as a business, it can be good side income and then eventually you can make it into full-time income if you if you want to. I know some agents, they just use this as like a side, side hustle or, you know, part-time income. Um, some do this full-time and they get paid a lot. You know, I think one month, two or three agents got paid like 30K, you know, <laughs> in one month. So it can happen, you know, but you really have to cultivate your business. And I'll talk about that in one of the other points a little bit later. So agencies, let's talk about agencies first before I get into the other thing. There are a lot of agencies out there. There's different types. There's host agencies, which I am following under a host. I'm considered an independent contractor, but um, the host agency, they, they have like all the, they have all the like, nitty gritty details and like all of the systems in place and all I, you know, I had to learn their methods, follow their rules. And, you know, on the, on the flip side, they offer training, they offer, you know, support and stuff like that. And not all agencies are created equal. I knew one travel agent. She said when she became a travel agent, the, the agency that she was with was sink or swim. You had to learn everything, you know? And especially if you've never been a travel agent before, it's really daunting, you know? Like, if I didn't have the training that this agency provided, I think I would probably wouldn't be as successful as I am now, um, because I just wouldn't have all the tools and all the training that I needed. Um, so, there are MLM agencies, and MLM is like multi-level marketing. And those are the ones that you tend to see advertise, oh, get your free trips or get, you know, like they kind of entice you in um, with like, you know, these claims that you'll get free trips, you know, like that you can travel the world for discounted prices and stuff like that. And then you also have to recruit other travel agents. And so, and a lot of MLMs aren't really looked, they're kind of like the, they're kind of not looked nicely in a lot of the travel circles and like sometimes even travel agent Facebook groups or like other support groups won't let MLM agents in and you know and sometimes they they treat I don't know it's kind of weird like I I don't have too much personal experience with MLMs I just kind of like see like how people you know perceive them and also like me personally I don't want to like have to recruit travel agents I want to like concentrate my time on focusing on my clients and you know like time is precious I don't have time to deal with other people <laughs> you know like I don't have time to like be like hey I need to recruit 10 agents by you know December 1st I don't have time like I barely have time some days you know like I just want to focus on my clients and my business and with being an independent contractor with a host agency that's what my focus is on. And, you know, like, not all agent host agencies are also created equal. Um, when you look at, you know, when you start applying, you know, if you get an interview, make sure you interview them just as much as you're, they're interviewing you, you know. How, how, what is the vibe with them, you know? And if you get beyond that and you get to see the contract, read the contract, read your commission rate. You know, I heard one time, a fellow agent had a friend that joined a travel agency 
and like her commission was 30% and the host agency took 70, which is ridiculous. Um, you know, the host agency will take a cut because they do a lot of administrative stuff and stuff like that. Um, and, uh, Mine, when I started was 70-30, now I'm 80-20, but really read your contract, you know, I mean, other agencies could be different. I think sometimes if you're an experienced travel agent and you move to a different agency, they might like, you know, honor that, I don't know. Um, but definitely always read your contract, no matter what job you apply to. Always interview them just as much as they interview you, you know, get their vibe, get the feeling for what the job is. Um, and so yeah, so um, and I'll just go other expenses, um, other expenses that you have to consider with this job. I should have mentioned this a little bit earlier. Um, the host agency might have an annual fee, um, and like say my annual fee was it two or three hundred dollars? I think it was three hundred dollars a year, um, and basically that includes like the insurance, um, uh, the software that we utilize. I think that's really what that annual fee is, is for the software and um, the software and the annual and the insurance and stuff like that. Um, and then they take a cut, you know, but our agency does a lot of a lot of stuff for us. So I don't I don't like I'm not that mad that they take a per per percentage of my cut. You know, they, they help us out a lot. So I think that's it about the agencies, you know, just really, you know, really research your agencies. Um, and, you know, really hone in on, you know, the nitty gritty, like stuff like that. Now we're going to go into specialization. So, you know, you, like when I first became a travel agent, I wanted to book everything. But the problem with that is that there's so little time to devote to being a specialist, like to know all everything, that if you try to do that, then you get like bogged down. Um, my specialty is Disney, Universal, and Asia, specifically Korea and Japan. Um, South Korea, if I have to be specific, but I don't think I should be. But anyways, um, so those are my main focuses. I can book other trips, like past two weeks I've had a few Europe requests, and I always tell those people, like, that's not my specialty, but they're like, all right, you know, take your time with the quote. Um, and so, and, and the benefit of being with a host agency is if I just don't have time to take it on or I don't feel comfortable, like if it's a Hawaii itinerary, I pass that on. Like, hey, you know, hey guys, I have a client that wants, you know, to do Hawaii and one of the Hawaii specialists would take them on. But it's okay to have, you know, specialize in something. Like if you want to be a cruise specialist, you know, be a cruise specialist. The The cruise industry is booming and it's still like a huge part of the industry. You know, don't apply to a Disney World agency if you want to be a cruise specialist. I should have talked about in the agency, like different agencies also specialize in different things. So pick an agency that, you know, either has what you want as a goal or, you know, that you can do both. Like I can do Disney and Universal in Asia with my agency, but if I went to like a Disney only travel agent agency, then I'd be limited. So, so one thing I should have put in the other category, but anyways, so specialize, do what you're passionate about. If you're passionate about cruises, do cru be a cruise specialist. If you're passionate about Disney, be a Disney travel agent. You know, if you're passionate about Europe, be a European specialist. I think the market in most fields is generally good. Like, I, I mean, if you want to only like book Croatia vacations in the United States, I don't think you're going to be very successful. I don't know. I don't know anything about Croatia. So, you know, I could, you know, but I don't think that is a huge market. You know, I don't, I've never heard most Americans say I want to go to Croatia <laughs> for a vacation in a huge number. So, you know, having a specialty, you know, that you're passionate about. I think it also shows in your work, like people like, oh yeah, you should book your trip with like, you know, uh, Gary, Gary, he, he knows everything about Disney, you know, or Sheila, Sheila, like Sheila is like the best European trips, you know? So then people know you as that special specialist and then your name can get like tossed for like recommendations like that. So pick your specialty. And then lastly, so I won't, 
make this such a long video is treat this as a business. I think so many people see that like free trip thing and I'll, I'll comment about free trips. Like generally like you can get free trips like if you book a lot. But generally, if you're like starting out, you're not going to get a free trip unless like your host agency is like doing a trip. But even like our host agency, there is a certain amount of cost with these trips. But treat this as a business. Too many people that kind of get in like sucked into it think that, oh, it's like a discount plan. <laughs> it's not. It's a business. You still have to book clients. You still have to deal with clients. You still have to deal with your suppliers. You still have to, you know, it's still a job, <laughs> you know, it's not, you're just not like sipping margaritas on the beach, you know, doing nothing, you know, enjoying a free trip. No, like to get that free trip, you're usually booking a lot of sales. Like I know like Sandals, I think has like a point system, you know, I think some of the all inclusives, like if you book so many rooms, you know, you can redeem some nights free. So, but like I said, you're booking trips, <laughs> you know, it's not just, hi, I'm a new travel agent. I got a free trip, you know, unless you want it through like, a, like sometimes cruises and all these, they'll like, at a training, they'll do like a raffle for a free trip, um, which does happen. So you can win free trips, but it's generally, you know, you're booking, you're having a high volume of sales. Um, but I think if you treat this as a business, you cultivate each of your, you know, friendship well, and a business aspect with your clients. I think you can be successful, you know, but just don't. I think the people that fail are the people that don't treat this as a business and are just looking for handouts. You know, like, I want to be an influencer so I can get a free trip and I'm going to ask all these, you know, hotels for free rooms. Like, no, don't do that. Like, you know, work hard work, you know, and you'll get, be rewarded, you know? Um, I think that's it. I don't think there's anything else that I, I mean, there's probably some things I've missed. So if you do have a question, feel free to leave it in the comment section. Or if you're like a little bit shyer about it, you can message me on my Facebook or, or hit me up on my email. Um, the info is in the description. So, um, I'll end it there. So take care guys, and I'll see you like, give me an idea for another coffee talk. I do have some ideas, so anyways, talk to you later. Bye.